Hi, Archfield Weather.com meteorologist Paul Dorian here on Monday morning, November the 24th. We have an Arctic outbreak that will reach the northeastern part of the nation later this week into the upcoming weekend. It looks like much colder than normal air will flow over the Great Lakes region, causing yet another uh, impressive Great Lakes snow event. Those uh, downstream areas from Cleveland to Erie to Buffalo, all the way up to Watertown, certainly could be in store for some significant snowfall. And uh, it won't just be the snow that will be a problem for the, uh, the Great Lakes region. It will be very strong winds, and those very strong winds will move all the way into the Mid-Atlantic region by the time we get to Thursday night and Friday. And a few snow showers could even make their way uh, across the mountains into the I-95 Carter region with this late week Arctic air outbreak. We've been talking about uh, a couple of things with respect to longer term look at the uh, temperatures in the month of December, uh, specifically a stratospheric warming event that is indeed uh, taking place and there'll be kind of a reinforcing stratospheric warming event over the next few days. We'll talk about that here up front and we'll take a, a look again at the Madden-Julian oscillation which uh, uh, takes a look at, focuses on the tropical forcing over the uh, equatorial part of the planet and how it could impact the uh, temperature pattern across the U.S. later in the month of December. First of all, here's a look way at the top, top of the atmosphere, 30 millibar level. This is stratospheric temperatures as we stand right now here on November the 24th. You have this area of warming right over here. Now, just to get oriented. The North Pole is right in this area right here. The U.S. is down here. Now notice the polar vortex is stretching. And this is uh, what happens with a stratospheric warming event. Uh, you have a disruption of the polar vortex and that in turn can unleash some cold air masses into the central and eastern U.S. And sometimes this takes effect a few weeks later and have it has an impact several weeks later in some cases here. So this is uh, not necessarily going to cause some extreme cold next week, for example, but I would expect it increases the chances of some extreme cold coming into the central and eastern U.S. during the month of December, perhaps even into January. Uh, we mentioned before we have a more detailed video on the stratospheric warming event on our Meteorology 101 page, and you can see some example cases, for example, 1984, 1985, December to January in that time period when you had a stratospheric warming event in December and ultimately extreme cold in the month of January. So here we stand right now, indeed, stratospheric warming over the North Pole region here and a stretching out of the uh, polar vortex. Now, let's go five days from now, and here we go. We have even an intensification of the warming. This is, again, five days from now here, and you still have this stretched out the polar vortex situation right here. So indeed, we are un undergoing a stratospheric warming event. Again, this is temperature at 30 millibars, way up at the top of the atmosphere. Now, another factor we've looked at here is related to the tropical force or the tropical disturbance across the equatorial part of the planet, and depending on its particular phase or location, it can have an impact on the U.S. temperature pattern. And in this case, when it goes into what we call phase eight and uh, one and two, uh, that generally is associated with colder than normal weather across the central and eastern U.S. Phase seven is kind of a transitional phase. It, it's a colder phase, indeed, kind of s sets the stage for uh, the overall pattern to deliver cold air when it gets into phase eight and phase one. And here is a forecast from the European model here uh, uh, over the, uh, for the next several days. It really goes all the way out about a month from uh, November the 23rd all the way out to Christmas Eve, December the 24th. The MJO moves in a counterclockwise fashion on this kind of a plot. This is phase eight right here phase one right here, and it's moving through phase seven over the next several days. And by the time we get to the middle of the month of December, it moves into phase eight. Again, phase set, seven is a colder phase, certainly colder phase for the central and eastern U.S. than is 
phase six. It uh, you can kind of think of it as a transitional phase here, or uh, the, the time period where the atmosphere kind of sets up to deliver some cold to the central and eastern U.S., and that cold is delivered when the MJM typically moves into phase eight and ultimately into phase one. So you can see it will be moving into phase eight, really through phase eight from mid-December on. So again, this is kind of another favorable signal for some cold air intrusions during the month of December into the central and eastern U.S. Now, in the short term, we have an Arctic air outbreak that will move from the northern plains across the Great Lakes into the northeastern states by the time we get to Thanksgiving Day here on Thursday. And this uh, will also result in a Great Lakes snow event here, uh, like we had a week or so ago. This is a, another great setup here with cold Arctic air flowing above the still relatively warm waters of the Great Lakes. And we'll uh, kind of focus in on some areas over the next couple of minutes here. First of all, starting off the day here with some chilly air over the northeastern states, but above normal air throughout much of the nation, or especially focused on the northern plains, the upper Midwest here on Monday morning. Now, we'll move forward in time and we'll see that, <laughs> excuse me, we'll see that Arctic air start to show up here as it dives down from Canada into the central U.S. by midweek. And here we go into a Wednesday night. You can certainly imagine there's a strong cold frontal system right in this area right here. This is an Arctic blast here moving into first the upper Midwest, then the Ohio Valley, and we'll go a little farther in time. And by the time we get to Turkey Day, it makes its way all the way into the eastern states. This is the uh, midday hours on Thursday, Thanksgiving Day. A large area below normal uh, conditions here, extending all the way down to the Gulf states here and uh, all the way into the eastern. So it's certainly setting up for a cold turkey day across much of the eastern half of the nation. And really, the core of that cold air behind kind of a secondary cold front, an initial cold front comes through uh, sweeps off the East Coast at midweek on Wednesday, but then there's a secondary later Thursday. That ushers in even colder air, so the really the coldest day, the coldest time period relative to normal in the eastern states will be Thursday night and Friday here, and we'll see in a moment here, a very tight pressure gradient will produce some very strong winds as well Thursday night and Friday. Here we go on Friday, and that cold air We'll be reluctant to give up ground. Here we go into Saturday. A lot of cold air around here. Again, this is maybe the initial effects of that stratospheric warming event here. Cold stretching from southwestern Canada all the way into the southeastern part of the nation on Saturday morning. It does relinquish ground by the time we get to the latter part of the weekend. Maybe still chilly in the northeastern states on Sunday, but we'll see a, 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 a Pretty dramatic warm-up across the middle of the nation by the time we get to the latter part of the weekend. And that warmer air surges northeast into the nor northeastern states for the first day of December, which is a week from right now, next Monday, December 1st. But you can see there's still a lot of cold air around here across Canada and the northern plains and all the way down into the southwestern part of the nation a week from now, next Monday, December the 1st. Now, let's walk through the surface forecast maps using the GFS, the zero Z run of the GFS from last night. And here we have a very quiet day in the Glen Atlantic region today. Chilly, yes, frosty morning here. Temperatures a little bit below normal, or really uh, just a slight bit below normal to near normal in the big cities. Let's say D.C., Baltimore, Philadelphia, New York City, within a couple degrees of the seasonal norm. That'll change by thir Thanksgiving Day. Now, we'll move forward in time. We have a nice rain event coming to the Mid-Atlantic region. Again, any rain will be welcomed in the Mid-Atlantic region. It looks like tomorrow afternoon, tomorrow night, into the day on Wednesday. I expect the steadiest and heaviest rain will be from later tomorrow through tomorrow night, and then more of a scattered shower uh, likelihood on Wednesday in the Mid-Atlantic region. But again, a nice welcome rain event here coming to the Mid-Atlantic region, still well below normal for the last few months in D.C., Baltimore, Philadelphia, New York City with respect to total precipitation amounts. Now here we go, midweek on Wednesday. 
here's a strong low moving over the Great Lakes, and we have a strong cold frontal system right here. And again, this is kind of an initial cold front that will come through, sweep off the coast uh, by later Wednesday. But there'll be a secondary push behind it. This is Arctic air right here flowing in. Look at this pressure gradient setting up as of midweek across the western Great Lakes. Just some very, very powerful winds to go along with those snow bands that undoubtedly will form just downstream of the Great Lakes. And here we go into the day on uh, into uh, Wednesday night. And here's that initial frontal system right here by Wednesday night, clearing the coast on Wednesday night, paving the way for a cold turkey day all the way in the Middle Atlantic region. And here we are on Thursday, midday on Thursday. Now you have this low pressure system right here, you know, uh, Strong fetch of air, northwesterly winds on the back side of that low. You're already starting to see a midday and Thursday snow band starting to show up here on the models here. Indeed, another great setup here for uh, Erie, Buffalo, Watertown. A Buffalo and Watertown require some low-level winds out of the southwest for their heaviest snow bands, and that indeed is on the table here for later this week. So. Again, all areas from Cleveland to Erie to Buffalo to Rochester to uh, Watertown. Be on the lookout for not only Great Lakes snow bands here later this week, but very, very powerful winds, which, will, of course, will produce <coughs> worsening travel conditions here in the midday on Thursday. Now, one thing I want to point out, midday on Thursday, notice this 528 thickness line, just as an example of all these dash blue lines here that lower the thickness value here, the colder the temperature in that lower half of the atmosphere. This thickness represents the thickness of the atmosphere from 500 millibars, which is the midpoint, all the way down to the surface, or roughly 1,000 millibars. But watch what happens with these thickness lines. Here at midday on Thursday, you have 528 cutting across uh, the heart of Pennsylvania. Now, let's go a little farther out in time. And here we go. By the time we get to Friday morning, 522 thickness now, all the way down into uh, central Virginia, cutting across the Mel Delmarva Peninsula. In other words, it's getting colder between Thursday and Friday morning here. And indeed, that is because there is a secondary cold front that actually ushers in a little colder air. So it'll get, uh, while Thursday will be unseasonably cold, it gets even colder Thursday night and Friday in the Middle Atlantic, in the Great Lakes. Northeast U.S. as well. Look at this pressure gradient here. We have this 995, uh, 994 millibar low here over southeastern Canada as of Friday morning, 1033 high. This is a tight pressure gradient between the two, and this will result in uh, very strong winds Thursday night and Friday throughout the Great Lakes and Middle Atlantic, Northeast U.S. I expect at least 40 mile per hour winds here, and th this will. Uh, with this uh, powerful wind scenario here will be also associated with these heavy snow bands. Again, places like Buffalo, Watertown, you could have a little component of southwesterly low-level winds, so you could have some intense snow bands in those particular areas. Now, some of these snow showers can perhaps make their way all the way across the mountains, the Appalachians, into the I-95 corridor region, let's say Thursday night and Friday to go along with those very strong winds and unseasonably cold temperatures. We'd be lucky to reach 40 degrees in places like D.C., Baltimore, Philadelphia, New York City on Friday. It's well below normal for this time of the year. And here we go. Notice this snow band makes its way all the way into northeastern PA midday on uh, Friday here. Again, very tight pressure gradient here. And uh, that chill certainly lasts right into the upcoming weekend. The winds will start to relax Friday night and Saturday in the northeastern part of the nation, but it's certainly still below normal temperatures on Saturday, probably even Sunday as well here. And then uh, we'll have to watch by the time we get to the latter part of the upcoming weekend for a lot of moisture over the middle of the nation. And this is where we start to see that kind of warm surge of air out of, out ahead of this low-pressure area. By the time we get to late in the upcoming weekend and the early part of next week, and, and we ought to see some milder conditions by Monday, which is a week from right now, December 1st, in the Mid-Atlantic region on the backside 
of this departed high pressure area with a lot of snow, uh, and a potential for a lot of accumulating snow in much of the nation by the latter part of the weekend uh, into the early part of the next week by um, much of the nation that should be more specific across much of the northern U.S. here by the early part of next week. Something we'll monitor over the next several days. But a cold turkey day setting up all the way from the Great Lakes and Middle and Northeast U.S. Uh, Thursday. And it gets really windy by the time we get to Thursday night and Friday. And watch out. The Great Lakes snow machine will be turned on once again with this late week Arctic air outbreak. That's it for now. For ArcfieldWeather.com, this has been meteorologist Paul Orton.